So welcome back to Mid-Ohio. I hope you've been enjoying my coverage this weekend. Uh, I saw a lot of positive comments about yesterday's video as well as this morning's video. And if you haven't watched that one, I think you really should because I got to drill some drivers on uh, what they're going to be doing in 2023. Now, many of them can't talk because they're still under contract and uh, won't be able to negotiate until about August of this year. Um, but I think it's a really interesting insight. Now, today was qualifying day, go fast day, as everyone seems to be calling it now. Um, and it's uh, a Pato Award day, uh, Pato Award on the pole position here at Mid-Ohio. And so often is the case, the guys who start up front end up winning this thing, especially when uh, the pit windows are skewed in the way they are. Now, this is a very unique circuit. It's a very historic circuit. And I really don't have the knowledge base to talk about it a little bit. So you guys always beg for more Kyle on the uh, on the uh, on the videos, and uh, well, we we figured Mid Ohio was a good opportunity to provide you guys some more Kyle content. So here's the first, and hopefully, no, not hopefully only. Here's the first Kyle track guide. Normally, I'm on that side of the camera, but for this weekend at my home track. David has let me be in front of the camera so that I can take you on a tour of a couple of my favorite spots around the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Now first, we're here at turn four, but at the start of the race, this is gonna be turn number one. Uh, this is where the most people are gonna be, uh, so if you plan on coming to the race and you wanna sit here, you might wanna show up pretty early. Even in the, in the 80s and 90s, this was the spot, this is still the spot, and uh, you would think on TV that this would be a little bit more steeper. Uh, it's a little flatter, these corners, four, five, and six. Uh, from what I've learned, depending on when you started coming here, uh, it's called Madness. It's called China Beach because of the big sand trap. This is where Michael Andretti flipped, by the way. And, uh, or it's the S's. My family calls it the S's. The technical name is Madness. But uh, yeah, it just depends on when you started coming here. Here we are in the garages at Mid-Ohio, which the paddock is laid out a little bit differently than others, but the garages are different than any other track that I've ever been to. Not only is it a good view on this side of the front stretch, we're about to see some two-seaters, about to see some action, and the pits, it's a great view overall for the front straight, but if you go over to this side, you can actually look into the garage area. Now, if I'm a, if I'm a spy for land speed with cuts and racing, I'm gonna let the two-seaters go by. If I'm a spy for land speed with Cuthbert, Cuthbertson Racing and I wanna, I wanna do some damper spying, I wanna see some setup sheets, I got a little long lens, I can do that. Um, which I cannot confirm or deny that happens, but it could. Uh, the only garage that I know of in motorsports that is like this is the, uh, the Neon Garage at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. But these garages were built a long time ago. I don't have an exact date but they've been here a while and it serves as a great place to watch for the fans. I mean, you can come up here with you know, a paddock pass. Uh, so not only do you get access into the pits at Mid-Ohio, but you can also get a view from the paddock. So this next spot is a spot that you might not know about or probably don't know about. Uh, this is Oak Tree Bend. Now, when this place opened in 1962, this was a portion of the track that actually was a part of the layout. It came out of, when you're entering Thunder Valley, you'd go around, you go around this oak tree. And it only lasted for one year. In 1963, it was gone. Uh, it was a little bit too dangerous, uh, but if they would have stuck with it, this would have been the layout that we would have known today. But there are still remnants of it, as you can see, which is pretty cool. Uh, we just got this little bit of asphalt. And of course, luckily, thankfully, the oak tree uh, does still exist. Uh, this is something that not a lot of people know about uh, because of course it only lasted for one season in 1962. Now, what replaced Oak Tree Bend, of course, is Thunder Valley. And as you can tell, it's a lot more noisier over here. Now, I think this is a very unique uh, part of track here because where else on a natural terrain road course are the walls this close on both sides? And as you can see, the banking here is kind of like an oval. And the reason why it's called Thunder Valley, not only we're on this hill here and it <laughs> goes through a valley, it's a little bit loud over here, don't you think? Yeah, if you want to sit in Thunder Valley, you might want to bring some earplugs. So for our final stop on this uh, track guide, we're at the carousel, the final, or well, the second to last corner. 
And uh, it's called the Carousel for obvious reasons. This is one of my favorite spots. You might actually see me here tomorrow for the warm up. There's no catch fencing. Uh, you're really close to the cars. And uh, one thing about this corner is it looks easy in principle. But right when you're about to get powered down, right here, there is a gigantic bump. And I'm going to try and stall here for a few seconds. So, uh, Mr. Uh, let's see who comes on by here. Mr. Wyatt Berkacek, or Brit. Rakacek, sorry if I mispronounce it, but you can see this bump right here, right on power down. Uh, even in an Indy car, you can see that bump and it's right when you get down on the power. So like I said, Pato Award is on the pole position for tomorrow's race, but let's take a look at the full starting lineup for tomorrow's race. And like I said, it's Pato Award on the pole. Next to him is uh, Scotty McLaughlin, who you will be hearing from later. A sweet as lap, getting him second on the grid. Colton Herta in third. He's a former winner at this racetrack. Felix Rosenquist uh, kind of implied that he's racing for a job. He'll roll off fourth in the second Aero McLaren SP car. Scott Dixon, who is so successful around this racetrack, rolling off in fifth. Simon Pagino, you'll hear from Pagino and Dixon later on in this video, rounding out the Fast Six. Alex Pillow alongside David Malukas, who has been so impressive throughout this year. Kyle Kirkwood alongside Callum Eilat. Renus VK alongside Alexander Rossi in row six. Marcus Erickson and Joseph Newgarden, who has bounced in Q1. Elio Castroneves alongside Christian Lungard in row eight. Romain Grosjean, who seemed a little bit upset with the Firestone engineers after his qualifying run. Just interesting uh, little tidbit there. Alongside hometown hero Graham Rahal, Takuma Sato and Devlin Francesco in row 10. Will Power, who had his two fastest laps deleted for allegedly infer interfering with Elio Castroneves alongside Connor Daly, Dalton Kelly and Jack Harvey. And then Simona Di Silvestro alongside of Tatiana Calderon, who may well be in her final IndyCar appearance today and Jimmy Johnson on the final row. Okay, so like I said, I talked to a few drivers who were in the Fast Six today, some drivers you have not heard from except for Pagano, because Pagano loves to talk, and who am I gonna say to deny him that opportunity to talk? But we also talked to a couple of Kiwis. Look, I, I probably had just a cleaner session. You know, I think uh, Will and Joseph got, they had the pace, absolutely, yeah. but um, just got caught up in some stuff, I think. So I don't know exactly, but um, yeah, our car feels really good. Um, I knew we had it in us, but obviously, uh, you know, the Pence cars have been fast all weekend, but it's just a matter of putting it together and qualifying them. Thankfully, we did that. Most people are talking about how it takes about three laps to fire up the tires. Did you kind of find that to be the case? Yeah, yeah, it was actually surprising, though. Even on the older set of tires, it took a little bit of time as well, you know. So, uh, yeah, it was interesting, and I was surprised how quick it actually got but um you know I'm, I'm excited where we're at i think we've got a great car great shot for tomorrow and i'll uh, see what we got yeah it was okay we um you know definitely all these sessions are very tight you know you're talking hundreds of a second and i think uh, actually q2 i think there was four of us maybe almost on the same time so it was nice to be on the right side of that but uh always tight here uh kudos to pato um i think we can you know we've definitely got a good car it seems to be pretty good on the long run uh struggling in a few areas you know just trying to get the car stopped and then a bit of understeer in the coast phase but um yeah, it's a bit of high, man. It's, uh, it's fun to be here. It's July 4th. Hopefully we'll be uh, blasting some fireworks at the end. You're the master of strategy. It seems like it's a two-stop race. Do you see anything, any way that it's not going to be a two-stop race? No, nah, not really. You know, unfortunately, the way they've done the laps here, I don't know why. We, we kind of shortened them during the COVID period and when we ran here, double headers. But uh, it needs to go back to a 90-lap race or, or something a bit longer. So you do have that split. It's what makes these IndyCar races crazy is when you have a, a solid two strategy and a, and a solid three, you know. So... Uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll they'll realize that here soon. And you won the last 90 lap race, I believe. So it let's works. go back to that. Yeah, let's do 90 lap. <laughs> yeah, very very excited, super um, satisfied because we started the weekend big struggle, um, and we've been struggling on road course. But I think we just figured out uh, what it is that I need. Bit of a departure from what we've done before and what the team's done before, but it's um, it's working for me, and I approved it today. So we. Um, we feel very good for tomorrow. Um, you know, obviously we want to find a little bit more time to go to pole position, but there was a huge leap forward um, for the road course stuff. So uh, excited for, for the rest of the season. It seemed like one of the big talking points throughout qualifying was, was how long it takes the tires to get fired up. When did you kind of find that sweet spot? You know, the, the thing is, is to make the tires work, you have to go out there and be very aggressive. So you have to take a lot of risk and slide the car around and that's how you generate temperature. So if you're not comfortable with the race car, you can't do it. Uh, and you're kind of, you know, handcuffed. Um, 
But this afternoon they gave me a car that was so comfortable for me, um, had so much rear security that I was able to really be aggressive. So I felt like my tires were coming up better this afternoon. Obviously the heat helped, uh, but it's definitely going to be interesting tomorrow um, coming out on cold tires versus the hot tires on track. This is going to be a big game. So the tires, you would say, are kind of going to be the biggest variance in, in what wins and loses this race tomorrow? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a two-stop race for most everybody, unless there's some... It's always going to be a two-stop race anyways, but... Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. If there are yellows, then uh, there might be ways to take opportunities, but uh, it should be pretty straightforward, and, and the, the race is going to be in the pit, uh, pit sequence. So, tomorrow... Um, you know, I, I almost want to be a pessimist because every driver, you know, to a man has said uh, it's going to be a two-stop race tomorrow. It's going to be not so strategy heavy. And as we know, it's kind of tough to pass in this era of IndyCar because everybody's so damn close, which is in some ways a good thing. It's a blessing and a curse, right? Um, it's great that the, the competition is that high, but at the same time, uh, it, it's a little bit sad when, when you come to a track like this and the race isn't really designed to give you that exciting result. Now, that being said, we could have an exciting result tomorrow. It'll be a fast race. I looked this up, the last 90 lap mid-Ohio race was only an hour and 45 minutes. So if this thing goes caution free, it could be a very, very quick 4th of July uh, celebration here. But hopefully, uh, I think Scott Dixon said it best, uh, someone will be celebrating with fireworks tomorrow. Um, and hopefully there are some fireworks on track. So. We're standing in victory lane here, and somebody's going to be spraying champagne. Somebody actually left their champagne. Can you believe, actually, I think this is like the, uh, the not champagne that they give all the, uh, the kids in, in Road to Indy. But uh, someone will be spraying champagne in victory lane tomorrow to go along with their fireworks. That stuff is sticky and nasty. Ugh. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll uh, reconvene here tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your predictions for who will win the Honda Indy 200 here at Mid-Ohio in the comments section below, and I will see you at the end of the race.